Hey, what's up? This is Caleb with VFX City, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to convert any logo or any text into neon art in After Effects. All right, before we get going, I want to let you know that there is a free project file that you can download that will allow you to follow along with this tutorial, or if you want a project file that you can just drag and drop your logo and boom, out comes your neon art, uh, I have a project file over on my website that can do that for you as well. You can find a link in the description of this video. So let's get started. So I'm going to open up our follow along project file here. And in the project file, you'll see that there is a background layer and there is a logo layer. Um, the background is uh, just a simple texture uh, image that I shot and the logo is the VFX City logo. You can use uh, any logo you want, just make sure that that logo is in a PNG format or in uh, a vector format. And um, if you do use a vector format, make sure that you uh, select the continuous rasterize button. I can show you what that is here in a second, but uh, you'll definitely want to make sure that's selected so that you don't get any pixelization when you're working in After Effects. It's kind of a nerdy thing, but I promise you, you'll want to make sure it's selected. So let's create a new composition. So we'll go up here to composition, new composition, set it to 1920 by 1080 and click OK. And uh, let's rename this composition logo comp. And I'm going to drop in our logo. And if you're using a vector logo, you just want to make sure you select the continuous rasterize button. It should be right here. I don't have it because I'm using a PNG format, right? Uh, so the uh, effect we're going to use to uh, outline our logo here is the Vegas effect. So we're going to get lucky here and uh, win the After Effects lottery. Wait, that's not Vegas. Vegas is like slot machines. Never mind. Um, so I'm going to change the blend mode to transparent and I'm going to go to segments and set it to one. And then we will change the opacity to one. So now look at that. The end opacity is one. So now we have a solid outlined uh, logo that looks a lot like neon art already. And we haven't even hardly done anything. So this is already off to a great start here. Um, I'm going to change our length here uh, from one to something slightly less than one because, you know, neon art always kind of has those notches taken out of them. Um, and, you know, for the most part, that's pretty cool. We can change the color to uh, anything we want. I don't know why. I just love blues a lot. Neon art is all over the place. Could be red, could be pink. Sky's the limit. Um, and uh, we'll go over here to our final comp and then drop our logo comp right on top and boom, now we are talking. So let's go ahead and drag and drop our background image into our scene here. I'm gonna hit S for scale and I'm gonna scale this down. Uh, surprisingly enough, this is the cleanest concrete in all of Los Angeles. It took me a while to find concrete this clean uh, because the ground here, I don't know if you know about this, but can be a little filthy. I'm not saying that I don't like it out here. I'm just saying, you know, wouldn't hurt to power wash the sidewalks every now and then. Uh, and <laughs> we can go over here to our effects and presets browser, go to uh, tint, type in tint, drop that tint effect onto the logo. Then we'll map our white to uh, a really dark gray, just something like that. And so it's just real slight in the background there. And let's go ahead and set these to 3D. And I'm going to go up here to layer new camera and we'll create a 50 millimeter camera we'll call this camera one. That's totally fine. And what we can do is set a keyframe for the position of the camera at the very beginning. I'll go to the very end and let's push forward here. About like that. So it fills about like that much of the frame. So now over the course of 10 seconds, it just kind of scales up like that. Cool. So let's, uh, Let's start stylizing, yeah? So let's go over here to our uh, effects and presets browser. I'm gonna type in glow and I'm gonna drop that onto our logo comp here. And I'm gonna change our threshold down to zero. And for the uh, glow colors, I'm gonna set to AB colors. Now we're just gonna select uh, some blues, some blues, something like that. There we go. And now we can go in here and change the radius, maybe to something just a little slight, just kind of a little bit of like a, a glow to the edges here. And uh, that looks cool. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the glow. And now we have another glow. So I'm gonna kind of turn up the radius there a little bit. 
That looks awesome. And I'm going to duplicate the glow one more time. Three whole glows in one little layer. That's crazy. And so now we have some really bright glowing text. I can turn down the opacity a little bit, or the intensity a little bit. To, uh, we're at 0.3 right there. So now we have some neon text, but we don't want to end there. That'd be super boring. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to customize our logos. And, and this is the part that's going to become custom for you. So for me, um, I can see that there are just like some different sections here. We have this VFX section, we have our different letters, and then we have this box. And so I kind of want our neon sign, whenever it turns on, I want it to kind of flicker a little bit. Um, so to do that, I'm actually going to use masks to segment out our logo. So I'm going to duplicate this logo comp and I'm going to solo this. I'm going to call this the VFX city layer. And I'm going to use our, uh, our mask tool to just kind of cut out the VFX part. Cool. Looks awesome. And I'm going to duplicate that bottom logo, uh, one more time and we'll call this uh, C. We can duplicate the C and we'll do the IT. Duplicate the IT, do the Y, and we'll duplicate the Y, and we'll do the box. All right. So now I'm going to solo each one of these things individually and uh, cut these out. So with the C selected, we'll go up here um, to our, our rectangle tool. You can use the pen tool if there's kind of an irregular shape, and we'll just kind of cut out the C. Great. And now let's go over here to the T. Cut out the T. About like that. And then we'll solo the Y, go over here to the Y. And the very last one's gonna be the box, and it's a little more tricky, right? Because, um, you know, if we create a, a box around the box, the city part is still gonna be right there in the middle. So to fix that, I'm gonna set another mask right in the middle here. Kind of cut out the inner part, and we'll set this mask mode to subtract, and now we have a box. If we, uh, deselect the solo there, you'll see that we have an entire logo made up of individual parts, right? Sweet. All right, so now let's get into some stylization. So what I want us to think about is kind of how our neon lights are gonna come onto the scene, right? So I think the neon lights should come on um, maybe in full at their brightest at about four seconds. Um, so I'm gonna select our, our solid logo, the main logo first, and I'm gonna go over here to our effects and presets browser and I'm gonna type in fill and I'm gonna drop the uh, fill effect above the glows. So it's really important that it's above the glows. And then I'm gonna set the color to just, you know, a cyan color like we had before. And I'm gonna set a keyframe for the color at four seconds. So I just selected that keyframe box right there. And you can hit U with the layer selected and see everything going on in the timeline down here. Uh, and I'm gonna go over here to are uh, the very beginning and I will set the color to black. And so now we'll see that over time, the VFX City logo just kind of fades on. And you'll notice that like, it fades on really quickly after about 15 frames and then it just kind of fades on a little more slow over time. So what I actually wanna do is I'm gonna find the kind of, the part right before it gets real bright. I'm gonna set another keyframe just by hitting this diamond right here. I'm gonna pull that diamond to about the two second mark. So now the VFX City logo kind of fades on and then it gets real bright there towards the end. Great. Um, so that is perfect for our main logo. But what I want to do for our individual logos, so our individual pieces that have been cut out, I kind of want them to flicker at different times, right? Um, so the way that I'm gonna do that is first by setting all of these logos um, all of these neon art logos, I'm gonna set their transfer mode to add. So now the colors are being added on to each other, just kind of making it a little more bright there. And I'm gonna select the VFX and I'm gonna move forward to about the 10 frame mark. And uh, I'll uh, set it an opacity keyframe. So I'll hit T for opacity and we'll set a keyframe. I'll move that keyframe forward about two frames and we'll set it to zero. So now it kind of flickers on. And let's have it flicker off. So I'll move forward about two more frames, flicker off, move forward two frames, and flicker on. So now if we preview this, you can see that it just kind of flickers on, and then it's on, right? So just real simple. There we go. Great. So for these other letters, we can get a little more creative with it. Um, I'm going to go to the C, uh, the C layer, and hit T for opacity. 
set a keyframe for 100 again. We'll move it forward uh, two frames. We'll have it flicker on. And maybe for the C, we want it to just go down to about 50. And then we can have it come back to 100 there. Great. And you can actually copy these keyframes. And I can go to the Y here. And wherever my current time indicator is, this, this blue line, wherever I paste, um, it will actually paste the very first keyframe here. So I can paste that, and now it looks like the C flickers on, and then the Y flickers on, just like that. And for the T, IT, I'm going to hit T, and uh, I'm going to have it fade on maybe a little slower, so maybe about three frames. So we go from 0 to 100%. Um, then let's go back down to 0, and then 100%. So this one just flickers kind of slowly. Great. Uh, this is pretty cool. It's kind of starting to look like, I don't know, like Stranger Things or Blade Runner or something. It's awesome. Um, and then for the box, um, maybe we don't want to get too crazy with the box. I'm just going to have it fade on. So I'll set a keyframe at about the one second mark. Again, you don't have to be uh, precise or perfect with this. It's art. So just like make it whatever you want. Uh, and then you can turn the opacity down um, to zero. And so now you can see if we scrub through here, all these layers kind of flicker on. They look like somebody uh, flicked clicked on the lights in the bar and the VFX city bar, and uh, it's just kind of illuminated now. So that looks awesome. That looks super cool. Um, one thing that I can see that I want to do is kind of give it like a flicker, you know, like neon. Sometimes it like has like energy pulsing through it, and it's not like a constant glow. Um, so I'm going to go to um, our main logo. So I'm going to solo this so we just know what it is. So our main logo, the, the one that's just the entire logo, I'm going to go to one of the glows here. Uh, we'll go to Intensity. I'm going to hold down Option and select the stopwatch. And we're going to add in an expression. And an expression is just a short little line of code that tells After Effects to behave in a certain way. And it can do all sorts of different things. Um, but the expression I'm going to use is the wiggle expression, which is probably the most famous and common expression in After Effects. And I'm going to say uh, wiggle, open parentheses, 10, comma, 1, close parentheses. And so what this is telling After Effects to do is wiggle this glow intensity value 10 times a second by a value of 1. So every second, this is going to be wiggled by a value of 1 10 times a second. All right? So it's just kind of a random way to make um, things happen uh, and values occur in After Effects. All right? So now if we scrub through here, you can see that this is kind of flickering. It's real bright. In fact, you know, maybe it's a little too bright so we can turn down that threshold a little bit where it uh, just barely appears, maybe about like that. So now you can see it flickers, great, and then goes into oblivion. All right, cool. So now let's add in um, some more stylistic elements. So uh, neon lights uh, do not appear from nothing. Um, they, uh, they have to be there first, right? So uh, we don't want this just to like opacity on. That's, that's super weird, right? Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate um, that logo comp and we'll call this uh, dark glass. And the dark glass, um, we'll go in here and uh, we will delete everything. So now we just have this real simple logo here. And I'm going to drop in the fill effect. And we're going to do exactly what you think we're going to do. We're going to drop this down to just a real dark gray. And I'm going to make sure that our transfer mode is set to normal and uh, not to add because uh, if you have uh, any dark pixels in your scene and you set a transfer mode to add, they, they won't show up. So that's not good. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is apply a, a bevel alpha effect to this layer. And you'll notice that it kind of outlines here and it just kind of makes it look like it's a tube of glass, right? Um, and we can turn this light intensity down to where it just outlines it just a little bit, about like that. So now as we scrub through, it looks like those those glass uh, tubes are being illuminated, which is pretty darn awesome if you ask me. So uh, now let's think of some other fun things that we can do. So uh, I think this wall, like this background wall, should be illuminated a little bit. Um, if you know, if, if a sign is that bright, like you wouldn't expect just the neon to be bright. You'd expect the wall behind it to be bright, and we can do that uh, very easily. So if we just go to Layer New Solid, I can select uh, just a blue color, about like that. And then we can go to our pen tool and we can just kind of cut out a shape about like that, just around our logo. We can adjust the edges here. And then I'm going to hit F for feather 
and feather out the edges about like that. And then we can set this transfer mode to add and then drop this below all of the other layers, just like that. And then I'm gonna select that layer, hit T for opacity and turn that down to, well, let's say like 30, about like 30, like that. Looks pretty darn cool. Uh, might be getting a little too bright there, so maybe uh, 30 is not the right number, maybe about 20, something like that. Sweet. So that's looking pretty darn awesome. So we also want there to be a cable going up to our neon lights, right? Neon uh, has to draw its energy from somewhere. And so uh, let's go to our pin tool, and without any layer selected, uh, we're going to make sure that we have our stroke uh, color set to a dark gray. And then we don't want any fill. So if you have a fill color, just select the fill text and select the uh, transparency box there and hit OK. And the stroke of five is fine. So I'm just going to draw in uh, just kind of a kind of a rounded uh, kind of wavy shape here like that. About like that. Sweet. And uh, we'll drop that shape layer below all of our other layers. And we'll call that shape layer cable. All right. And so with the cable effect, we're going to use the uh, bevel alpha effect, just like that. And I'm going to hit command shift H and that'll get rid of um, all of our guidelines. So we kind of see what's going on here. And I can adjust this light angle to where it looks like it's going, coming from above from the, the neon light here. And we can change the light color to blue, about like that. Um, maybe not so saturated, maybe a little bit lighter, about like that. And let's set a keyframe. So we'll set a keyframe. Um, oh, we actually want to set this to uh, 3D as well. That'd be super weird if uh, the cable <laughs> was not in 3D space. Um, so we uh, will set a keyframe at four seconds because that's when the neon sign is at its brightest. And uh, I'll set the light color uh, keyframe right there. I'll move forward to the very beginning here and we'll set the light color to black. Great, so now the cable is dark, right? Cable's dark, and then the cable kind of illuminates as the sign gets brighter. Awesome. So that looks great. And you know, if you wanted to, you could even uh, put like a shadow in the background. So we can duplicate that dark glass layer and uh, we'll make the fill completely dark black. And uh, you know, if I solo the background and that dark glass two layer, in fact, I can call this shadow, I can move it over just a little bit, maybe just like a few inches there, and go to the Effects and Presets browser, type in fast for fast box blur, and we'll just kind of turn this up just a little bit, like just ever so slight, about like that, and I'll deselect the solos. So one last thing that we want to do is uh, we want to set a keyframe for this glow, so it shouldn't be glowing at all times, so I'm going to go to uh, the four second mark, we're going to select our glowing solid layer right there, hit T for opacity, set a keyframe, go to the uh, like half second mark here, and we'll change that opacity down to zero. So now let's preview our final result. Sweet, all right, that's looking cool. And the awesome thing about this technique is you can just hop back into this logo comp and change anything you want. Um, so just as an example, I can throw in some text here. And uh, wow, I don't know why my text is so big. So weird. Um, we can scale up that text here. Boom. And I can literally copy this Vegas effect, paste it onto the text, and go to the final comp, and boom, check that out. Isn't that cool? Uh, you know, obviously you'll want to go in and custom mask um, the individual uh, letters or words, but you can very easily replicate this effect over and over again. All right, and that's all there is to it. Again, you can go download the project file over on VFX City. And thank you to everyone who sends in uh, their VFX and uh, motion design projects. I love sharing them out with the VFX City community. And if you ever have any questions, please shoot them over to me. I would be happy to help you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.